Morton, I'll just ask you to pull that microphone very close to your mouth if you could. You can adjust it. Thank you. How old are you? 42. Where were you born? Flushing, Queens, New York. Where did you grow up? Between Bronx and Queens. How far did you go in school? A little bit of college. Where did you do that little bit of college? Wyoming Correctional Facility. Okay, do you have a GED? Yes. How far did you go in school before you got your GED? To the ninth grade. Okay, where do you live now? Queens Private Correctional Facility, GEO. I'm sorry, GEO. GEO is the name of it? Yes, ma'am. Is that a federal jail? Yes, ma'am. When did you start living in federal jail? Around March 6, 2017. When you were initially arrested, what were you arrested for? Racketeering, firearm in aid of racketeering, and drug conspiracy. Have you pled guilty to any federal crimes? Yes. What federal crimes did you plead guilty to? Racketeering, drug conspiracy, firearm in aid of racketeering, murder for hire, firearm and murder through the use of a firearm, and conspiracy to commit murder. All right. Those three murder charges, were they all related to the same incident? Yes, ma'am. All right. Have you been sentenced for your crimes? No, ma'am. When you pled guilty, did you have a cooperation agreement with the government? Yes, ma'am. We're going to come back to that later, but briefly, what does that agreement require you to do? Come to all of the meetings, not commit any more crimes, and tell the truth? You said you pled to racketeering. What was that charge related to? To my participation in the Bloodhound Brim. What are the Bloodhound Brims? It's a New York street gang. Does it go by any other names? BHB and Hound. And Hound? Any others you can think of? Bloodhound Brims, BHB, Hats, The Jets. The Jets? Yes. Looking around the courtroom today, do you recognize anyone else who was in the Bloodhound Brims with you? Yes. Can you please point out that person or persons by where they're sitting and what they're wearing? Light. He has on glasses with a blue shirt, blue sweater. And Don P got bald head with glasses. And La Brim, he has a yellow shirt with a tie. Your Honor, may the record reflect that the witness has identified each of the defendants? Record will so reflect. Mr. Morton, before you were a member of the Bloodhound Brims, were you a member of any other gang? Yes. What other gang or gangs were you a member of? I was a member of 5-9 Brim, Mac Bala Brim, and East Homicide. What are all of those? They're all hoods under the brim, under the NYBBA. What is a hood? A hood is like the set. It's a, a hood is just, you know, the group of people, group of individuals representing that, that set. A hood and a set are the same thing? Yes, ma'am. You said they were all under the NYBBA. What is that? That's like the nation of it. That's like, you know, that's the big, that's the group as a whole. Does NYBBA stand for something? New York Blood Brim Army. How many hoods or sets are under the NYBBA? It's supposed to be nine. Miss Arney, can we please pull up the government exhibit 902, which is in evidence? Mr. Morton, do you see that on your screen? Yes, ma'am. Do you recognize it? Yes. What is it? It's a graph of the pedigree. Which part of this is the pedigree? The bottom part, the blue. The blue? Yes. What are pedigree? It's the boroughs. It's supposed to be all of the boroughs you know, individual. Each, each hood, I mean, each borough has. Whatever is hound in that borough, that's the pedigree they represent. All right, let's take a step back. What's in the orange box at the top? That is the main, that's the nation. NYBBA. What's the yellow box under that? That's the hood that I was a part of. The hood? Bloodhound Brims. Yes, BHB. Under that are the pedigrees? Yes, ma'am. Were you a member of a particular pedigree? No, because I was gone when they officially started it, but I was there in the making of it. 
What do you mean you were there in the official start of it? When it when it was officially stamped and sanctioned, I was already out. But if I was still in it, I would have been a member of Queens, Beagleheim. Were pedigrees also a part of the BHB? No. They started at some time after you were a member. Yes, ma'am. All right. How did Beagle get its name? Labrim gave it to him. You said that that's your pedigree because you were from Queens. Yes. What did you think of the name Beagle? Objection. Sustain. I didn't. Sustain. When I say sustain, that means you don't answer the question. Oh. Mr. Morton, before the pedigrees were named, was there a discussion between you and other members of the Bloodhound Brims about what the name should be? Yes, ma'am. What name did you want Queens to have? Objection. Objection. Grounds. Relevance. Overruled. What name did you want, Mr. Morton? I wanted it to be Wolfhound. Why'd you want that? Because. Objection. Same basis? Yes. Overruled. Beaglehound was too, like a little dog. It wasn't aggressive enough. We can take that down, Miss Harney. When did you first join the Bloods, Mr. Morton? Around 2011. I mean, 2010. Sorry. Mr. Morton, when did you first join any Brim set? 01, 2001. Where were you then? In Downstate Correctional Facility. Just to be clear, are the Brim's Bloods? Yes, ma'am. How did you come to join the Bloods? A guy named Maine Brim brought me home under him. What does that mean, brought me home? Turn me, turn me blood. What was your relationship to Maine Brim after he brought you home? I was like his drop. What does it mean to be a drop? That I was under him. Who else was a drop of Maine Brim? At one point, La Brim. At the time you first joined the Bloods, did you receive information about the gang and about its history? Yes. How did you get that information? Through, like through a packet, letters. It was written down, paper. What kinds of things was written on the paper you received? Excuse me? What kinds of things were written on the paperwork that you received? Objection. Grounds? Hearsay. Overruled. You can answer. Like when did blood start? Who started it? How many hoods was in it? Oaths? What's an oath? It's what you take when you turn blood. What's the significance of taking an oath? It's so that you could. It's just something to show the loyalty, you know. It's just, it's a pledge. It's for you to pledge your loyalty to that, to that hood. Why is it important to get paperwork explaining the history of the bloods? Objection. Sustain. Mr. Morton. Let's go through some of the other sets that you mentioned being a part of. When did you switch from 5'9 to Mac Bala Brim? At some point when I got locked up on Rikers Island. Why would you switch? It was just, Mac Bala was a little bit more, it was a little bit more popular. They was moving a little more different than 5'9 Brim was. So, and it was a couple of GFs that was there. So I just went under them. What's a GF? It's like the head of the gang. It's Godfather. The godfather of Macbala? Yes, ma'am. Who are the godfathers of Macbala? Lo and Eli was there. You said that was when you were in Rikers? Yes, ma'am. After you got released from Rikers, did you continue being part of Macbala's? No. For a little while? For a little while until, you know, I left there. Okay, why'd you leave? I got shot and nobody, you know, they didn't know anything about it. Who shot you? Some Crips. What are Crips? It's like a rival gang to the Bloods. Okay, where did that shooting take place? In the Bronx. Where specifically? In Parkchester. Before the time that you were shot, had you had any other disputes with Crips in Parkchester before? Yeah, off and on. What was the, what was the nature of those disputes? Little beefs. Objection, Your Honor. Overruled. Little beefs about the drugs that I might have been selling, things like that. You said there were beefs. What does that mean? Excuse me? You said beefs. What do you mean? Like, I was, like I was selling drugs out there. They didn't want me to sell drugs out there. 
that created a problem. And you said they didn't do nothing. What are you talking about? They did retaliate. Who's they? The Max. After you were shot, the Max didn't retaliate? No, ma'am. Did you want them to do that? Yes. Why'd you want them to do that? Because I got shot and I was a part of them. How did you come to switch to hit squad brim? I went to a powwow one day and I was arguing with a guy named Maine Brim who had the hood at the time and Showtime was there and me and Showtime got to talking and he took me with him to East Homicide at the time. I heard you say powwow. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just try not to talk while I'm talking, okay? I heard you say powwow. What is that? That's like a meeting. What kind of meeting? It's a meeting for the bloods to get together and talk. Who's allowed to go to a powwow? Any blood, all the bloods could go. And I heard you say Showtime. Who is Showtime? Showtime was the GF. Of what? Blood Island Brim. At that time, what was Showtime? At that time, he was the GF for a squad. I'm going to show you on your screen what's been marked for identification as Government Exhibit 9. Do you recognize that, Mr. Morton? Yes, ma'am. What is it? It's a picture of Showtime. Do you know Showtime's real name? Yes, David Cherry. At this time, Your Honor, we would offer Government Exhibit 9, 9A and 9B. Any objection? No, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. Government Exhibit 9, 9A, and 9B are received in evidence. All right, Mr. Morton. You said that Showtime was the GF of Hit Squad at the time. Is that correct? Is that right? Yes, ma'am. Your Honor, can I ask for a time reference? Yes. Can you tell us when approximately Showtime was the GF of Hit Squad? Maybe around like 07. 2007? Yeah, between 07, somewhere early like that. Your Honor, could we just hear that last answer back, please? Can you say that again and try to speak into the microphone? Maybe sometime in 2007, maybe. Thank you. Mr. Morton, can you just slide the whole thing closer to you so you don't have to lean forward? All right. Mr. Morton, when you joined Hit Squad Brim, did you have any rank in the gang? Yes, I did. What was it? I was the high. What's the high? That's like right under the GF. It's the, the GF's right hand. How was it that you came to switch from Hit Squad Brim to the Bloodhound Brims? Show, show time. He turned Bloodhound Brims and he just took me with him. Approximately when was that? Between 08, early 08. Why did you follow Showtime to the Hounds? Cause I, you know, I went to Max to hit squad with him. So when he went over there, he just took my name with him and he just took me there. So I just stayed there with him. At the time that you joined the Bloodhound Brims, were you aware of the history of that set? Objection, vague. Well, I'm going to allow that question. You can answer that question. Were you aware of the history of the Bloodhound Brims when you joined? That's yes or no? Yes, yes. Were you aware of how it was founded? Yes. How was it founded? Latik took it. He took the, he went, he went out the yard and, you know, he told him this is what it is. I'm taking this hood and that was it. You know, that was, that's what he did. When you say Latik, who are you referring to? La Brim. What do you mean he took the hood? He went, it was, he went there and he, normally when you get a hood, you have to be like, he has to be voted in to get this hood. You have to be voted to get it. He didn't go through any of that. He just took it, you know? Voted by who? The council, like all the GFs of the Brim hoods. How was it that Latik was able to, objection, objection, sustain. At the time that you joined the Bloodhound Brims, what was Showtime's rank or position? GF. What were Showtime's duties and responsibilities as the GF? He's supposed to make the hood grow, get the numbers, make sure everybody was all right in the jail and out of the jail. When you say in the jail and out of the jail, what are you referring to? People that was on Rikers Island or people that was up north, upstate prison. What about them? He had to make sure that they was, you know, getting commissary, 
or getting weapons, making sure that they was all right. Did Showtime use any other nicknames that you are aware of? Yeah, Mr. Dead Game and Young Barack. Young Barack, what is that a reference to? Reference to Barack Obama, the president. Why did David Cherry use that nickname? Because he always... Objection! Objection! Sustain. Did Showtime explain to you the significance of that nickname? Objection! Sustain. And you said Mr. Dead Game. What is that a reference to? That's a reference to Hound, Bloodhound Brims. What does dead game mean? It's just, it's a greeting and response. It's a greeting and response? Yes. What's the response to dead game? I'll never stop. What was Showtime's relationship at that time to La, the founder? They was, they was close. They was like brothers, twins. Your Honor, I'd ask for a time frame. Can you tell us what time frame you're talking about during which they were close? Between 09 and right up to early, the end of 2010 or the early 2011. Did you ever learn why Showtime used the name Young Barack? Objection! Sustain. Besides being the founder, did La have any rank in the Bloodhound Brims? He's the GF in prison. What does that mean, the GF in prison? He ran, he ran it. He started the hood and he ran it as well. What was the difference between Showtime's responsibilities and La's? Lock controlled the jails and show controlled the streets. How, if all, did they coordinate their respective responsibilities? Objection. Sustain. You have to lay a foundation. Mr. Morton, remind us, what role did you have in the gang at this time? I was the high, show's right hand man. Show's right hand man? Yeah. As show's right hand man, what were your responsibilities? To make sure that everything show needed done got done. And how did Show communicate to you what he needed done? By phone or by telling me what he wanted me to do? What about La? Were you in communication with La at this time? Yes. How did you communicate with La? Through visits. By visits? Yes, ma'am. During those visits, did you talk about the bloodhound brims with La? Yes. Again, what period of time were you in communication with Mr. Johnson through visits? I want to say early 2011. Mr. Morton, approximately how long were you a member of the Bloodhound Brims? Say from between the, uh, just the years. Between the end of 08 and all the way up to early 2011. So about three years? Yes, ma'am. During that time that you were a member, was Showtime the GF? Yes, the whole time. How, if at all, did La and Showtime coordinate their respective roles when you were a member? Objection. Objection. Sustain. Same problem. Did you have conversations with Showtime about his responsibilities? Other than him telling me that, you know, he had to have had the numbers right or, you know, how he wanted the 9-11s, the powwows, to go like that. During this period, were you aware of whether Showtime was in communication with La? Yes. How were you aware of that? Objection, Your Honor. No. Overruled. He would call. He would call on the phone or, you know, he'd go to see him in prison. Did you visit La with Showtime in the past? Yes, I have. How did La and Showtime coordinate their respective roles? Objection! Overruled. Objection! Overruled. Through visits, through phone calls, through letters. What kinds of things, if any, did Showtime have to communicate with La about? Objection! Sustained. What kinds of things did Showtime communicate with La about? Objection! Overruled. Some of the rules or some of the lingo that they might have been putting together. What? Some of the things that might have been going on inside the hood. That's... Okay. I want to come back to the rules. I heard you say lingo. What is that? That is like a code. Code words that members of the gang use so outsiders don't hear or understand what we're talking about. Can you give an example of a code? Like, their gang meaning what's up, or I'll never stop, no time for traffic, meaning like, you know, ain't got no time for it. Did you have codes for other things? Yes, we had code. Objection! Overruled. For scalpels, they was called like wifeys. For weed, it was called late night. What is a scalpel? A scalpel is like a surgical tool. It's a surgical knife used for operating. 
How did you use them in the Bloodhound Brims? We sent those to Rikers Island or up north so that, you know, other members could defend themselves for whatever they was going to do with it. So what was the lingo or code for a scalpel when you were a member? Wifeys. Wifeys? Yes, ma'am. When you say up north, what are you referring to when you say up north? The prisons. Jail prisons up north. New York State Correctional Facilities. You mentioned powwows before. Were powwows mandatory in the gang? Yes, ma'am. What would happen if a member missed a powwow? They would get fined or they would get kicked out the whip. I heard you say the whip. What's the whip? That's the jet. That's the hood, BHB. Okay, so whip, hood, set, jet. Those are all the same words? Yes. Those are all synonyms? Yes, ma'am. During the time that you were a high, did you ever find members for missing powwows? Yes, ma'am. Besides the positions that you've already mentioned, did the Bloodhound Brims have other ranks within the gang? Yes, they have. Which ones? They have the GF. They have the founder. They have the GF. They have GM. They have a high. They have a low, a five, a four, three, two, and one. And then soldiers. I heard you say GM. What's that? That's the godmother. What does the godmother do? She communicates with people from the jails to the streets. She's like, she's like a secretary. She goes and visits people. She makes sure all the female hounds is doing what they're supposed to do as well. What is the relationship between all those positions that you just named? That's all. They are leaderships. That's all leadership positions. Between the different positions, is there a relationship? Between the different positions? Is there a name for those positions? Yes, it's called a lineup. What is a lineup? A lineup is all the people who's in charge. All the, that's just what it is. It's all the people who's in charge of making sure everything is running smooth. It's the structure. It's a structure? Yes. Could we please pull up Government Exhibit 901, which is in the evidence? Do you recognize that, Mr. Morton? Yes, ma'am. What is? It's a graph showing the structure of a lineup. Do you see where it has higher status and lower status at the bottom? Yes, ma'am. Is that accurate? Yes. What does that indicate? That indicates from the one to the five. So, you know, one being the lowest, five being right under the low, and then the high and GF. Okay, we can take that down. Mr. Morton, during the time that you were a member, did the people who held leadership positions in the gang change? Yes. How were ranks and positions decided in the Bloodhound Rims? From show or from law? If guys were doing what they were supposed to do, they'd get moved up. If they don't, they get kicked out. What do you mean doing what they're supposed to do? As far as like making a name for themselves or going to see people or, you know, being on time for the, for the meetings, powwows sending money in for the kitty. Okay, I want to take those one by one. What do you mean making a name for yourself? Being out there, whether you're selling drugs, making money, or, you know, robbing people, or on Rikers Island, you know, turning up on Rikers, or up north, cutting people. The more, the more people hear your name, the more likelihood it is that you're going, that you're going to go up in status. I heard you say going to see people. What are you talking about? going to see people on Rikers or upstate jail. That was important within the Bloodhound Brims to visit people in jail. Yes. And I heard you say, Kitty, what's that? That's the money. So anytime you have a powwow, you're supposed to bring, you know, $20, $30. You hand that in and with the money, it goes to getting scalpels or going to somebody's lawyer or, you know, sending people on visits or just making sure people in jail have a couple of dollars on their commissary. When you said that you hand it in at a powwow, who do you hand it to? It would go from me to show, or it would go right to show. Okay, what kinds of things could make someone get demoted in leadership in the Bloodhound Brims? Not coming to powwows, not handling your business, backbiting, talking about people, breaking one of the rules. Breaking one of the rules will get you demoted definitely. How were the Bloodhound Brims rules communicated to the other members of the gang? They would get, when you turn Bloodhound Brim, you got a booklet with all the rules in it, history and everything like that. What were some of the rules that you remember? No backbiting, no snitching, 
take care of your brothers and sisters. Those are the ones I remember right now. What does backbiting mean? Talking behind people, talking behind people's back. Why was that an important rule? Because they didn't want it to look like, you know, starting stuff up, starting with people, starting situations is called, you know. And I heard you say no snitching. What does that mean? No cooperating with the government. Why was that a rule? It's the number one rule. It's the number one rule? Yeah. Why was that important? Because they didn't want a situation to come about where somebody would be cooperating against the organization. What were some of the consequences for breaking those rules? You can get put on the wall. You could get kicked out the gang. What does it mean to get put on the wall? That means like having a lot of people trying to get you or shoot you, things of that nature, any way that somebody can violate you. If you put on the wall, any way that another gang member could violate you, they're supposed to violate you. Were there other consequences, Mr. Morton? Yeah, you could get killed. You could get shot. You might have to pay a fine. You might have to pay a fine? Mm-hmm. Who would determine what the consequences were? Me, Sho, La, Below. The leaders? Yes. You testified before the Bloodhound Brims was a set or a hood under the banner of NYBBA. Does NYBBA have a leadership structure as well? Yes, it does. Who's in charge of NYBBA? At the time that I was there, it was Lacey, Pee Wee. Lacey and Pee Wee? Yeah. And I heard you mention a committee. What is the NYBBA committee? That's all the GFs from the hoods, from the nine hoods. How did the top leadership of the NYBBA change, if at all? Objection. Grounds. No foundation. Sustained. Did it change when you were a member, Mr. Morton? Objection. No, there is no foundation. It is not clear how he knows those things. Mr. Morton, during the time that you were a member of the Bloodhound Brems, how did you become familiar with the NYBBA? Doing. Excuse me? How did you become familiar with the NYBBA? From when I first turned Brim, I had gotten a packet from when I first turned Brim. When I first turned Blood, I got all the rules and the history of the NYBBA. What kinds of information was on that history? Objection. Overruled. Again, it's like when it started, who was in charge, all the non-Brim rules, all the do's and don'ts of the gang. Okay, if there were to be a change in leadership. Objection. Objection. Leading. Speculative. Well, can I hear the question first? Please say the question. If there were to be a change in leadership of the NYBBA, how, if at all, would that be communicated? Objection. Sustained. Did you have conversations with other members of the Bloodhound Brims about NYBBA? Yes. Did you have conversations with La Brim about Pee Wee and Lacey? Yes. Did you have conversations with Showtime about Pee Wee and Lacey? Yes. What did La Brim and Showtime tell you about Pee Wee and Lacey? Objection. Objection. Grounds? Lack of foundation. Overruled. That they were trying to park Bloodhound Brims and Mac Baller Brim. What does that mean? Park the Mac Baller and Bloodhound Brim. They're trying to move them two hoods out of the NYBBA. Who was trying to do that? Pee Wee. Okay, what happened when Pee Wee tried to park the whips? It didn't work. He ended up getting cut. How did Pee Wee end up getting cut? Show, La, and I believe Lo. They all pushed a button on Pee Wee. Who is Lo? He is the GF, Mac Ballabrim. What does it mean to push the button? To have other gang members violate somebody. And what happened after they pushed a the button on Pee Wee? He ended up getting cut. And after Pee Wee got cut, what was the status in the gang? He wasn't. Objection. In the gang. Overruled, he wasn't in it no more. You testified already that one of Showtime's responsibilities as a GF was to make sure that the members were good. Yes. What does that mean? So, wanted to keep getting more and more numbers. Numbers of what? Of making people coming into the hood. Members? Yes. During the time you were a member of Bloodhound Brims, how did the number of members change? Some people moved up in rank. Some people got kicked out, you know, and then some people, we got new people in. But overall, how did the numbers change? They got bigger. Your Honor, can I approach the board? Yes. 
Mr. Morton, I am showing you what's in evidence as Government Exhibit 4. Do you recognize that? Yes. What is that? That's a picture of Meezy. Your Honor, we can't see that. Can you step out a little bit, Miss Nichols, so defense lawyers can see what you are showing? They have these exhibits, Your Honor. It wasn't on the screen. They may, but I'm asking you to please show them, all right? All right. This is Government's 4. Thank you. Who is Meezy? He was a hound. He was a hound too? Yes. I'm showing you what is in evidence as Government Exhibit 6. Do you recognize that person? Yes. Who is that? That's 10,000. That's 10,000? Yes, ma'am. Who is 10,000? Thomas Morton. You? Yes, ma'am. I am showing you what's in evidence as Government Exhibit 8. Do you recognize that person? Yes, ma'am. Who is that? That's Top Dollar. Who is Top Dollar? He was a hound, too. I'm showing you what's in evidence as Government Exhibit 10. Do you recognize that? That's... Who is... He was a hound as well. I'm showing you what's in evidence as Government Exhibit 11. Do you recognize that? That's Meth. Who is Meth? She was hound as well. All right. I'm showing you what's in evidence as Government Exhibit 14. Do you recognize that? That's Puff. Who is Puff? He was hound as well. I'm showing you Government Exhibit 15. Do you recognize that? Yes. Who is that? That's Old Dog. Who is Old Dog? He was also a hound. And I'm showing you what is in evidence as Government Exhibit 43. Do you recognize that? Yes. Who is that? That's Nikki. Who was Nikki? She was hound as well. We are going to put up on your screen Government Exhibit 47. Do you see that on your screen? Yes, ma'am. Do you recognize that? Yes, ma'am. What is it? That's a picture of Kickdoor. Who is Kickdoor? He was also a hound. The government offers 47 and 47C. Any objection? No objection. 47 and 47C are received. Mr. Morton, how can members of the Bloodhound Brims identify other people who are in the gang? Objection. Overruled. Through the use of red flags, hand signals. What's the signal? I'm sorry I interrupted you. What was the last part of your answer? Red beads. What's the significance of red? It indicates blood. And what you said about hand signs. What hand signs are you talking about? They do something like this, and this would be because of the hat. Can you just hold up that so the jury can see? All right, so just hold it up for me. So you have your thumbs out, your fists together, and your index fingers pointed up in the air? Yes. What does that mean? Hat. Who is allowed to do that symbol? Any brim hood. Was there a hand sign specific to the bloodhound brims? Yeah, they had a couple. They had this right here. This is the hound. So you got the ears, the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. So you are holding. Hold it back up again. So you are holding your hand with the palm facing in. Your thumb is up in the air. Your index finger is bent in to look like the eye of the dog. And your two next fingers are out to look like its nose. And then your pinky finger is the dog's mouth? Yes, ma'am. All right. What are calls and responses? That's like lingo. Lingo? Yes. Can you give an example? Like, dead game and I never stop. That's call and response or whoopty. What does whoopty mean? That's like, that's hound. That's to let you know the hounds is in the building. Who is allowed to say whoopty? Only the hounds. You testify that you were a member of the Bloodhound Brims for about three years. Where were you at the end of that time? I had gotten locked up. Where were you locked up? In Broome County, Binghamton. What had you been arrested for? Guns, drugs, and money. Why did you leave the Bloodhound Brims at that time? Me and La wasn't seeing eye to eye. You know, we was having our little dispute. You and La were having a dispute? Yes. 
What was the nature of that dispute? He didn't trust me. Why not? He wanted me to do something to Showtime, and I didn't do it. What did he want you to do to Showtime? Objection. Overruled. He wanted me to kill him. All right. How, if all, did you communicate your decision to leave the gang? I wrote a letter. To who? To La. Who did you address it to? To Nikki. Who is Nikki again? The one on the board, the dark skinned lady. She is a member of the gang? Yes, ma'am. Did she have status at that time? I think she was the high at the time. She was the high? Yeah, I think so. What did the letter say that you wrote to La? It just said that, you know, I was out and then I'm flying solo. You said I'm flying solo? Yes, ma'am. During the time that you were in jail in Broome County and you sent the letter, were other hounds in jail with you? Yes, ma'am. What was your relationship to the hounds that you were locked up with? Well, they was, they was under me and they had came to Binghamton with me. They were under you? Yes. What do you mean by that? They was brought home by me, like they was under my, they was with me. Were you still representing to them that you were hound? No. Did you still have friendly relationships with them? Yes. Did you continue to commit crimes with them while you were in prison? Yes, I did. What crimes? We sold heroin and we had weapons. Where is Binghamton? Upstate New York. So you testified earlier that you know Light, Don P, and La. At the time that you first joined the Bloodhound Brims, had you met any of those people? I had met Don P when I first joined. So I would like to take them one by one. Let's start with Light. How did you first meet Light? I met him about at Showtime's house. Where was Showtime? Bronx. Living? In the Bronx. Okay, just to be clear, do you recall the year? It has to be between sometime in 2010 and 2011. Was this before or after you and Showtime joined the Bloodhound Brims? This was after we already joined. And what was your rank at the time? I was the high. How were you introduced to Light? Show was just like, he just was like, this is the hound boy Light. What did you understand Show to mean by calling Light a hound boy? That he was part of us. He was part of the jet. He was part of the hood. Objection, Your Honor. Overruled. We're going to show you on your screens what's been marked for identification as Government Exhibit 712H, which is from the Instagram account, G5 Light. Do you recognize that, Mr. Morton? Yes. What is it? It's a picture of somebody throwing a hat. The gang sign. The government offers 712H. Objection, Your Honor. Objection. Do we need to approach on this? So 712H, is it in evidence now or? It's been authenticated by stipulation and we are offering it now. Well, so has the authentication stipulation been read? It has, Your Honor. And what does it say? because I don't remember it. It says that this piece of evidence was taken from a particular Instagram account and it lays forth the business records, what the custodian would have authenticated if we had called a custodian. Your Honor, there is no connection. There is no connection of this. There is no evidence this Instagram account belonged to Mr. Green. I need to see the stipulation. All right, I've been handed a stipulation marked as Government Exhibit 1003. So there's a line that says government exhibit 712 and 712-blank. I excerpt it from the Instagram account, G5 Light. Is that the one I should direct my attention to? Yes, your honor. I think we should have filled in the exact exhibit numbers before we offered it. All right. I would ask that you consult with defense counsel and fill in the appropriate letters. But I think the objection is that up to this point, there hasn't been any testimony that Instagram account G5 Light is associated with Mr. Green. Is that the basis for your objection? Yes, Your Honor. I don't believe I said that it was, Your Honor. I said that this exhibit was taken from the Instagram account called G5 Light, which is exactly what the stipulation says. Okay, but then I don't understand your basis for offering 712H. It is a gang sign. Oh no, I understand that, but it hasn't been linked up with anybody that is on trial here. It is just a floating photograph of someone showing a gang sign. Do you understand what I'm saying? I do, Your Honor. 
The rest of the photographs on the account include people's faces. I think it will be clear that G5 Light does refer. I'm sustaining the objection. Mr. Morton, when you met Light for the first time, did he have any status in the gang that you were aware of? Objection. Sustained. No foundation. Mr. Morton, did you at any point in time have conversations with other hounds about Light's status in the gang? Yes. And did other hounds tell you what Light's status in the gang was? Yes. At the time that you first met him, were you aware of what Light's status in the gang was? Yes. What was that? He was the GF. Mr. Morton, just at the time that you met him, did he have status? No. Objection, Your Honor. Asked and answered. No, that's not. May we approach, Your Honor? Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take our afternoon recess now. Thank you, Your Honor. May I just pull the board around first? Yes. Thank you. Ms. Harney, can we please pull up in evidence what is Government Exhibit 14? Mr. Morton, please remind us, who is that? That's Puff. Who is Puff? He is Hound. How do you know him? I met him through Showtime. Ms. Harney, can we please show the witness 712E as an echo? Do you recognize that, Mr. Morton? Yes. What is it? That's a picture of Puff and Light and a couple of guys wearing a whoop t t-shirts. The government offers Exhibit 712E. Any objection? 712E is received. May we publish? Yes. Ms. Harney, can we just zoom in on the photo portion of the exhibit? Mr. Morton, now that the jury can see it, where is Light in this photo? He is wearing a green vest in the middle, in front of Puff. And so which one is Puff? Puff is the one in the back with the glasses on. And you mentioned whoopty. What is the significance of the word whoopty? That is a word that the hounds use when they might be in the club or they just want to scream out that people know they're around. And just to be clear, do you know the people in this photo who are wearing the whoopty shirts? No. The one on the far right has a hat on. Can you read what that hat says? It looks like it says dead game. What does dead game mean? That's for hounds as well. That's a call out. And you say, I never stop. Other than in this picture, have you ever seen Light and Puff together? Yes. Miss Harney, can we please show the witness what is in evidence as government, or show everyone, I guess, what is in evidence as government exhibit 227? Do you recognize that, Mr. Morton? Yeah, that looks like the building that I went to see Puff at. That's a building where you went to see Puff at? Yeah, the lot. Like the, the, I don't know what to call that. Like a, that's like the back of the buildings. Can we please pull up Government Exhibit 228? Do you recognize that, Mr. Morton? Yes. What is that? That is where I went to see Puff to get some drugs from him. You went there to get drugs from him? Yes. What kinds of drugs did you get from Puff? Heroin. I'm sorry? Heroin. Was that once or more than once? A few times. A few times? When you bought drugs from Puff, did you have conversations with him about that? No, just, you know, just asked him about, you know, getting it for me or whatever, and he would give it to me. I pay him for it. About how much would you buy in each transaction? About 10, 15 grams. How much did Puff charge for 10 to 15 grams of heroin? 600, 60 a gram. How was the heroin package when you bought it from Puff? It was loose. It was just like a bag with powder and little rocks in it. Based on your conversations with Puff, did you have an understanding of where he got his drugs from? Objection, Your Honor. Did you have a conversation with Puff in which he told you where he got his heroin from? Not a conversation with him, no. Okay. Did you have conversations with other members of the Bloodhound Brims about Puff's source of heroin? Yes. Objection, Your Honor. You are objecting to that question? Your objection is overruled. Next question. Who did you have those conversations with? Gang members, Showtime, other hounds. What did Showtime and other hounds tell you about where Puff got his drugs? Light. Objection. Grounds? 
Hearsay. Co-conspirator statement. It is overruled. So Light and Puff, they call each other cousins or whatever. So Light been somewhere where he end up meeting the connect and that's the word that I got is the drugs come from him and Light sells them. Puff sells them. The drugs come from Light and Puff sells them? Yes. All right. And you said that a typical amount that you would buy from Puff would be 10 to 15 grams. Is that right? Yes. What, if anything, would you do with that heroin after you purchase it? As far as bagging it, I would take it, crush it up, and maybe put something on it, and then package it, and make bundles of 10, and take 10 bags and make a bundle out of that with a rubber band, and I sell those. Okay. I just want to break that down a little. I think I heard you say that you had put something on it. What does that mean? Yeah, like Benito or Quinine, just to make it stretch a little bit. What are Benito and Quinine? It's just something you mix with the heroin. So for every one gram, you might put a half a gram of Benito and a half a gram of Quinine on it. Why would you do that? To stretch it, to make more money on it. And I heard you say bag it. What does that mean? So they have little glassine bags, and you put them in that. You put the heroin in that bag, and you fold the bag up, put a piece of tape on it, and make 10 of those. It's a bundle. You put a rubber band around it, and that would be $100 a bundle. $100 a bundle is what you would sell it for? Yes. Where? New York would be $100 a bundle. Out of town, it would be more. Out of town, it would be more? Yes. In Binghamton, it would be more. Where is Binghamton? Upstate New York. How much could you sell a bundle for in Binghamton? Anywhere from $180 to $200. Okay, I heard you say glassine. What does that mean? That's the white bag that the heroin comes in, so it don't stick. It's a bag so that it don't stick or milk. Okay, and I heard you say that 10 bags is a bundle? Yes, ma'am. Can you just show with your hands how big a bundle is? Probably it's square off, maybe a little bit smaller than a domino piece. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Maybe a little bit smaller than a domino piece. Then a domino? Yes. Miss Harney, can we please show the witness what has been marked for identification as Government Exhibit 712B, as in boy? Oh, I think this is in evidence. Can we publish that, Miss Harney? Mr. Morton, do you recognize that? Yes. What is it? That looks like the place where I would meet Puff at. And that's Puff in the back with the glasses on. And that's Light sitting on the car. Okay, what's Light doing with his hand? He's throwing up a hat. That's a hat. That's the way to show a hat sign. That's a way of showing the hat sign? Yes. Okay, can we zoom out again, Miss Harney? This gentleman in the middle, wearing the black t-shirt with the stars, just to be clear, do you know him? No, I do not. What's he doing with his right hand? He is also throwing up hat. Okay, and which one again is Puff? The one in the back with the glasses and the hat on. The black hat? Yes, ma'am. And those buildings behind there, do you recognize those? It looks like the buildings where I was at when I went to go and meet Puff. You can take that down now. Mr. Morton, I'd like to switch gears and talk about Don P. I think you said before you met him when you met Light. Is that right? Yes. Do you remember exactly when that was? Maybe sometime in 09. Where were you when you met Don P for the first time? I think we was at Show's house, if I'm not mistaken. How was Don P introduced to you? As being how, and that's what Show introduced me as to him. I don't understand. So if you introduce somebody and you say, yo, this is the hound boy 10, or this is the hound boy Don P, or you know, that's to let him know he's in the gang with you. Is that what Show said when he introduced you? He said, that's the hound, that's the hat. What did you understand that to mean? That he was part of the gang with me. I heard you say before, as an example, this is the hound boy 10. Is that referring to yourself? Yes. Because your nickname was 10,000? Yes, ma'am. All right. Based on your conversations with other members of the gang, 
Were you aware of whether Don P had status in the gang? I think he had the low, if I'm not mistaken. What is the low? That's like right under the high, and it's the leadership in the gang. Based on your conversations with other hounds, did you later learn whether Don P's position in the gang changed? I think it went up or down, I'm not sure. We're going to show you what's been marked for identification as Government Exhibit 704A. Do you recognize that, Mr. Morton? Yes, I do. What is it? That's a picture of Don P. Up and Stacy. Who are Up and Stacy? Those is Don P's men's. What do you mean? Like, that's like his group, his team. What do you mean his group or his team? The people he's always around, the people he hangs out with. Were Up and Stacy in any gang? I think Up was. He's a blood, and I know Stacy was hound. We'll offer Government Exhibit 704A, Your Honor. Any objection? No, Your Honor. No. 704 is received. All right, Mr. Morton, now that the jury can see it, can you describe who was in this picture? Don P is the one bent over with the red cup and jeans on. Up is the one that's behind him with the red shirt on. And Stacy's the one with the blue shorts and striped shirt. We can take that down, Miss Harney. And can we please show the witness what's been marked for identification as Government Exhibit 19? Do you recognize that, Mr. Morton? That's up. We'll offer that, Your Honor. Government 19. No objection. Government Exhibit 19 is received. Ms. Harney, can we please show the witness what's been marked for identification as Government Exhibit 12? That's Stacy. We'll offer that, Your Honor. Government Exhibit 12. Any objection? Any objection to Government Exhibit 12? No. No. Government Exhibit 12 is received. We also offer 12C, a nameplate, Your Honor. Any objection to 12C? 12C is received. Ms. Harney, can we publish 12 for the jury, please? Then can we publish 19 for the jury, Ms. Harney? Mr. Morton, I'm going to show you what's been marked for identification as Government Exhibit 235. Do you recognize that? Yes. What is it? It's a map of Uptown. Uptown what? In the Bronx. We'll offer that, Your Honor. Any objection to 235? No, Your Honor. No. 235's received. Mr. Morton, have you been to the areas that's shown on this map before? Yes, I have. Under what circumstances? To go to a barbecue. To go to a barbecue? Yes. Approximately where on this map was that barbecue? On Bussin and Boyd. I'm sorry? Bussin and Boyd. Can you just show with your finger? I think you can paint on it there with your finger. Bussing and Boyd? Yes. Who was hosting the barbecue that you went to? Don P. You can take that down. Who else was there? Don P. Up. Nikki. Ryder Hound. Show was there. I'm sorry? Showtime was there. I think, if I'm not mistaken, a girl named Finney. There's a lot of hounds there. Was La there? Yes. Your Honor, can we have a time frame? I can't hear you. Time frame. Time frame? Do you know approximately when this barbecue was? Maybe the end of 11, the beginning of, yeah, I mean, the end of 2010. I'm sorry. End of 2010? Yeah, somewhere around there. All right. Ms. Harney, could we pull up what I think is in evidence as Government Exhibit 708F? Mr. Morton, do you recognize that? Yes, that's Don P. What's Don P doing with his hands? He's throwing up the hat sign. We can take that down. Can we publish that? Now that the jury can see it, Mr. Morton, what's he doing? He's throwing up the hat sign. We can take that down. Can we show the witness what's been marked for identification as Government Exhibit 206, 210, and 239? Mr. Morton, do you recognize those exhibits? Yes. What are they? That's the block where we're throwing a block party. I mean, the barbecue at. We'll offer those, Your Honor. Government Exhibit 206, 210, and 239. Any objection? No. 206, 210, 239 are received. Could we show them to the jury, Miss Harney, starting with 206? All right, Mr. Morton, now that the jury can see it, 
What are we looking at here? This is the house. This is the house right here where we were throwing a barbecue at. Did you go inside the house during the barbecue? No, we only stayed in the driveway and in the front. I'm going to clear that. Can we show 210, please, Miss Harney? Mr. Morton, what's in this picture? This is the driveway that we was at. What's at the back of the picture there? A boat. Are you familiar with that boat? Yeah, I seen Up and Don P take a picture on the boat on, on their phone. Where did you see that? On my phone. They like, think it was a Blackberry or something on Instagram or something like that. All right, we can take that down, Miss Harney. Mr. Morton, you named a minute ago some of the Bloodhound Brim members who were at the barbecue. Just to be clear, is that everyone who was there or just some of the ones you remember? Just some of the ones I remember. What was happening at the barbecue? People was eating, drinking. Lyle was riding up and down on the bike, on the motorbike, and we was just partying. What do you mean Lyle was riding up and down on the motorbike? They had like a, it was a blue street bike, and he was riding up and down the street. Your Honor, can we have a time frame? The time frame he testified to was at the end of 2010. Your Honor, can I make that? Because I'm kind of messed up with the little time. It could be anywhere from the beginning of 09 all the way up to 2011. That's the time that I was hanging out with them. So with respect to when the barbecue took place, right. You're telling us that it was from the beginning, sometime between the beginning of 2009? Yes. Until when? Until 2010, into 2010. Into 2010? Yes. Sometime within that time period? Yes. Okay. Mr. Morton, is it easy for you to remember the years that certain things happen? No, it isn't. The day of the barbecue, do you remember what the weather was? It was, it was okay outside, it was nice. Did anything happen that day at the barbecue that stands out in your mind? Yeah, I seen Don P walk past me with a gun. What kind of gun? It's like a, a baby AK. What do you mean by that? It's like an AK without the back piece of it. How far away were you from Don P when you saw that? About a couple of feet. What was Don P doing with the baby AK? So I was standing like right off of the sidewalk. He walked right past me with it. He had it hanging to his side and he walked right into the garage which was right across the street from the house. Miss Harney, can we pull up Government Exhibit 239? Mr. Morton, can you describe what this photo shows? This shows where I was standing at in the garage that he went to. Can you put a little X where you were standing at? I was standing right here. In the street towards the right sidewalk, is that right? Right. Where was Don P? He walked past me right here. And you just ended there at the structure that's on the left side of the screen. Yes. What is that structure? That is the, the garage. After you saw Don P walk over there with the AK, did you see the gun again? No. We can take that down, Miss Harney. Other than the day of the barbecue, have you been uptown with Don P on other occasions? Yes. What other occasions? I went over there by, they had like a little trap house that we went to see them at. What's a trap house? It's like a, it's like a spot where you would sell drugs out of or in front of. When you say they, who are you talking about? Don P or any. Anybody selling drugs, period. Right, but you said they had the trap house. Who are you talking but Don P and Stacy? Who was with you in the trap house that day? Don P and Stacy. Oh, okay. Can you give us a time frame when you were with Don P and Stacy at this location? Between, between 09 and late 2010. Do you remember where the trap house was? It's, it's not far from where this house is at. Can we pull back up 235, Miss Harney? Mr. Morton, can you show approximately where the trap house was located? It's like in this area right here. Just to be clear, do you remember exactly? No. We can take that down, Miss Harney. All right, you need to specify for the record the area that he circled, the corner that he circled. Thank you, Your Honor. For the record, he circled the vicinity of the intersection of Barnes, Pittman, and Bronxwood Avenue and 236th Street. Yes. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Morton, 
What made you think that the place that you were in was a trap house? I've been selling drugs all my life. I've been into some structures like that. So when I went in there, I seen that, you know, the way it was set up was similar to the places where I've been, where it was dark in there. It was dirty. It was roaches crawling around. It was bottles on the floor, unwashed pans that been sitting there for days. So that's what make me believe that that's what type of house somebody would be using that for. Did you and Don P ever have conversations about drugs? Yes. What kinds of conversations? He wanted to buy some heroin one day from me. He asked to buy heroin from you? Yes. Did you sell it to him? Yes, I did. How much heroin did you sell to him? I think I sold him like 10 grams, I think, if I'm not mistaken. How much did you sell that for? I sold it to him for 600. Did Don P discuss with you why he wanted that heroin? You know, he was taking that out. He was gonna sell it. He was gonna sell the heroin. Where was Don P selling? In Troy, New York. Where is Troy, New York? That's upstate New York as well. Based on your experience selling drugs, is 10 grams of heroin a user amount or a seller amount? Objection. Overruled. It's a seller's amount. Ms. Harney, can we show the witness Government Exhibit 708B? Do you know approximately when this conversation was with Don P about the sale of heroin? Do you remember when approximately that conversation took place? It would have to be between 09 and the end of 2010. When you were at the trap house, did you see any drugs or drug paraphernalia in that location? No, I did not. Mr. Morton, can you see 708B on your screen? Yes, ma'am. Do you recognize that? That's Don P on the, on the bike. We'll offer that, Your Honor. Government 708B. No objection. And he's throwing up the hat sign. No objection. No. All right, Mr. Morton. What were you about to say? He's throwing up the hat sign. He's throwing up the hat sign? Yes. Have you seen that bike before? No, not that one. What about the car? No, not that car. What kind of car is that? That's a BMW. Have you seen Don P with other BMWs before? Yes. What kind of BMW have you seen him with? Like a rag top. I think it's a Grand Coupe 6 Series, I believe. What color was the car that you've seen him with? It was a dark color with like a maroon inside of it. We can take that down, Miss Harney. All right, Mr. Morton. I'd like to change topics and discuss La Brim. At the time that you first joined the Bloodhound Brims, had you met him? No. Had you ever heard of him? Yes. What was La's role in the Bloodhound Brims at the time that you joined? He was GF, founder. The GF and the founder? Yes. Where did you meet La in person for the first time? At a nine. What's a nine? That's like a powwow, a meeting. A nine is another word for powwow? Yes. Is nine short for something? Nine one one. 9-11. Okay, so 9, 9 one, one, and powwow all mean the same thing? Yes. What was La doing at the powwow when you met him? I got there late, so when I got there, it was just a bunch of people surrounding him, and he was talking to him. Miss Harney, we can show the witness Government Exhibit 241. Do you recognize that, Mr. Morton? That's the day of the powwow. That's a picture? Yes. How are you able to recognize it as the same day of the powwow? Your Honor, can we have a time frame? Yes. Can you tell us when this powwow took place? This was the time that he first came home. He who? Labrim. Just Mr. Morton, do you know what year that was? Maybe anywhere between 09 and 2010. Who's in the picture? Don P, Showtime, Kick Door, Tiptoe, and Jazzo. Your Honor, we'll offer Government Exhibit 241. Any objection? No. 241 is received. Miss Harney, can we publish? Mr. Morton, now that the jury can see it, can you go through the people in the photograph again? The man all the way in the corner with sunglasses, that's Don P. The guy with his arm around him, that's Showtime. The female in the green, that's Kickdoor. Lies the guy in the middle with the glasses on. 
Tiptoe is the short one with the all white hat on. And Jazzo has the stocking cap, the white stocking cap with the blue and white striped shirt. Who is Tiptoe? Tiptoe was the GM at the time. Oh, Tiptoe. I thought you meant kick door. I'm sorry. Tiptoe is hound right next to La. What about Jazzo? Jazzo is also hound. What about kick door? Kick door was the GM. The GM? Yes. We can take that down. Mr. Morton, why are you able to remember that that's a picture from the same powwow that you were just talking about? Because of what La had on that day. Why does that stick out in your mind? Because I was making fun of him because it was. Clothes was mad big. It was real baggy clothes. Where was La living at the time? He was staying with Showtime in the Bronx. All right. You told us already that you have been selling drugs your whole life. During the time that you were a member of the Bloodhound Brims, where were you selling drugs? In the Bronx and in Binghamton, upstate New York. About how far away is Binghamton? About three hours from the city. Were you living up there? For a short time, yes. Back and forth. Back and forth? Yes. Back and forth between Binghamton and where? In the Bronx. How did you decide to sell drugs in Binghamton? Another hound named Seagull had called me and told me to come up and bring drugs up there with him. Who is Seagull? Seagull was a hound as well. What were you selling in Binghamton? Heroin and crack cocaine. How did the prices for those drugs compare from Binghamton to New York City? They like double. They're double where? In Binghamton. Starting with crack. Where were you getting the crack that you were selling at this time? I get it from different places through Showtime. From Showtime? Yes. Directly from him or from people he knew? From people that he knew. Do you recall their names? As far as the crack? Yes. A guy named Black that was in Harlem. But other than that, the crack, I don't really remember too many people's names. Was it always the same person or was it different people? It was different people. Where was Showtime living at this time? He was staying in the Bronx at this time. How did the drugs get from the Bronx to Binghamton? We would drive them up. Who's we? In the car, me and whoever I might have been with that day, we drive them from New York City to Binghamton. When you would buy the crack, what were you paying for it? $37 a gram, sometimes $40 a gram. What were you selling it for? Each one I would sell 20s up there, so 20s would be like a 0 0.1, 0 0.2. 0 0.1, 0 0.2 what? On the scale, that's what it would measure out to be. Do you know what unit of measurement you were using on the scale? No, I don't. I don't know. I don't know the exact name for that. But you would look at the scale? What kind of scale was it? A digital scale. When you purchased the crack, how was it packaged? It was loose, just a, like a saran wrap bag or baggy and loose. What does crack look like? Like a piece of sheet rock, like a broke up chalk. What if anything would you do to the crack before selling it? It was two ways you could get it. You could get it in the powder where you have to cook it up with baking soda and water and put cold water on it. And it could rock up, become hard, and you would take that and chop it up and put it in the bags. Or you could buy it already cooked up, and all you have to do is take it out and chop it up and bag it all up, put it on the scale, weigh it, and bag it. So typically, when you were buying it, was it already cooked? Yes, most of the time. Yes. Then when you would get the crack that was already cooked, what would you do with it? I would take that, put it on the scale, make sure I had the right amount of grams, take a razor and break it all up, and then bag it up into little baggies or zip ties, like a sandwich bag. You put it on the corner of the sandwich bag, and you just make like a knot out of it and cut it. And then you keep repeating until you finish it. How much were you selling these knotted bags for? $20. What is the typical amount that you would buy when you were purchasing crack for sale? It would vary. Like, sometimes I get 20 grams, sometimes I get 10 or 15. About how often were you getting resupplied? Like every two to three weeks. All right, let's turn next to heroin. Where were you getting the heroin you were selling? 
from different people as well. I got some heroin from Puff. I got some heroin from a guy named Militant. Show had me get it from a guy named Doc before. A guy named what? Doc. Doc? Miss Harney, can we show the witness what's been marked for identification as Government Exhibit 37? Do you recognize that, Mr. Morton? Yeah, that's militant. The government offers Exhibit 37 and 37B. Any objection? No. 37, 37B are received. Can we publish that, Miss Harney? Mr. Morton, who is militant? He was hound as well. When you are purchasing heroin from militant, where would you go to get that? To the Bronx. How much would you buy from him typically at a time? I would buy bundles from him, so the heroin was already bagged up. So I might buy 10, 10 bundles, you know. So each bundle is 10 bags. So I might buy 10 of those bags. 10 of those bags or 10 bundles? 10, I mean 10 bundles, but each bundle was 10 bags. What were you buying? What were you paying militant for each bundle that you got from him? Anywhere from 40, 50 or $60 a bundle, depending on how good and how big the bags was. What were you selling them for to your own customers? So I was sell it. In New York, I would sell each bundle for $100. In Binghamton, I would sell each bundle anywhere from $180 to $200. During this period of time, were you selling drugs in both New York and Binghamton? Yes, I was. What about when you purchased from Puff? Where did you go to get heroin from him? To his little, like, complex that they got over there in the Bronx, like on 180th, down that way. It was around 180th? Yes, ma'am. The pictures we saw before. Yes, ma'am. How much would you usually buy from Puff? 10 to 15 grams of it. 10 to 15 grams of what? Of heroin, sir. Of heroin? Yes, Judge. How did you decide? Can we have a time frame, please? Yes. During what period of time were you buying heroin from Puff? Okay, so that would be from anywhere from 09 all the way up until the beginning of 2011. How did you decide whether to buy from Militant or from Puff? Well, if Puff didn't have any, I would go to Militant. And if Militant was, whoever had the best, the best quality, that's who normally I would go to and get it from and whoever had it right then and then. How frequently were you getting resupplies of heroin? Again, like almost like every two to three weeks. What was Siegel's role in Binghamton? Well, he's the one that told me to come out there and he used to hustle for me. He used to work for me. What do you mean he used to hustle for you? He used to sell drugs for me. What does that mean? So I would give him $150 worth of crack and he would sell it, and he would give me $100 back cash. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're at 2.30, so we'll break for the day.